What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Floyd and Street's Finest Louisville Men's Basketball Podcast as part of the Field of 68 Media Network. I'm your host, Jeff Greer. So excited to be back with you. This episode was made possible by our partners over at Great Flood Brewing Company. Thrilled to be partnering with them, as I have said. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. Mike Pegues, the assistant coach for Louisville, the longest tenured assistant under Chris Mack over Chris Mack's career is our guest today. He will have plenty to talk about. We talked about players, Louisville Live, the September schedule, what it's going to look like for the assistants in November coaching the team without Chris Mack, uh, all sorts of different topics. Very interesting, as always, with Mike. He is a fascinating guy, really gets in depth on players, too. I love hearing him talk about that side of things because he's he takes great pride in the work that he, that he puts in there. Uh, before we get to the interview, which is about 25 minutes, it's really good stuff, I will first and foremost ask you to go rate and review Floyd Street's Finest. If you enjoy the podcast, go do that. That's a huge, huge help for us. It's, it's a great way for people to find us in the algorithm on whatever podcasting platform it is that they use. And uh, we want more and more people to listen to Floyd Street's Finest. We're the only Louisville men's basketball specific podcast in this city. And it's a great uh, chance for people to stay up to speed on what's going on with Louisville basketball. So that's a great way to connect with more Louisville basketball fans. And hey, look, if you know somebody, you don't have to just leave a, a rating or review. Tell them about the pot. That would be great. Uh, also, hit up the F Field of 68 Media Network's YouTube channel. We've got all sorts of videos up there, and they will start hitting it hard again this coming winter. Just started the Field of 12 Media Network as well, the college football side of things, if you want to check them out as college football season gets underway i do have a message for you from great Flood brewing brewing company excuse me is they are honored um, to be among floyd street's finest while football and basketball season gear up mention this ad take advantage of this people to get a dollar discount on your drink at either great flood location in the highlands or middletown stay tuned as we have game watch deals to encourage us to watch all the biggest games together we can't wait to listen along with you as Jeff brings us all the best news, discussion, and interviews to bring us closer to the university we love. Cheers from Great Flood Brewing Company, Louisville made, brewer owned, go cards. And uh, God, man, I'm excited about Great Flood. Love me some Great Flood. Uh, and before we get to the Mike Pegues interview, I will also tell you about our sponsors over at Bed Rivers Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up yet, Bet Rivers is offering $250 in a match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart from everyone else is that they require just one playthrough to turn that bonus into cash money. With their new Rush Pay instant approval, withdrawals are not only fast, they are safe, secure, and reliable. Go to betrivers.com today or download the Bet Rivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. And if you have a gambling problem, please. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Without any further ado, here is my conversation with Louisville assistant coach Mike Pegues. All right, we are joined by the Delaware legend, Mike Pegues. Mike, what's going on, man? How are you? Not too much, Jeff. Feeling pretty good, man. Things are well. Uh, love the Delaware legend line, man. That takes me <laughs> way back. <laughs> Always makes me feel good. Takes me back to the 90s. I uh, appreciate that. There you go. Uh, man, everything is well. Everything is well. Good. Um, uh, before we get started, I do have to ask you, did you get a chance to get away a little bit and, and rest and relax uh, in August at all with the family? You know, normally, Jeff, I would get back home to D.C. and visit some family or, or possibly, you know, get out for a little vacation with the wife. But, you know, when you got a 15 month old man, things kind of change. Mm -hmm. So we had a we had a grand staycation, which was actually really good. Just being able to spend a lot of quality time with him and be with him throughout the day and my wife. So, you know, that that did us all the justice we needed. So hopefully we'll get out, move around next year a little bit. There you go. I got to ask then, because we're expecting in January. It's my first oh, kid. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's very exciting. I need yeah. to know, like, what's your top dad advice? What do you got for me? 
get your sleep now. <laughs> like sleep as much as okay. you possibly can right now. Like just go on a 10, 12 hour binge whenever you get a chance because you will lose a lot of that when, when your child is born. But it's an unbelievable experience. It, it has been awesome for me. You know, for so long I was uh, everybody, I was, you know, a father figure or brother figure, whatever to, you know, the kids that I was coaching and I never had the full experience of being a, a dad. Or, and uh, now that I have it, man, I get it. I get it. Like, I really understand why, you know, dads are so passionate about their kids and uh, the ups and downs. It's, it's all good. It is all love. And uh, it, it'll be great. You'll be a great dad, man. But get oh, your sleep you. now. Get your rest now. You're going to need it. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, good advice. I'm gonna take that uh, for yeah. sure. I don't know if my wife will appreciate it, but I'm gonna take the advice. <laughs> um, well, let's let's talk a little Louisville basketball. Um, uh, first and foremost, I, I think people are always curious what you guys are up to. I mean, I think people know if it's July, June, and July, you're you're doing your sessions and you've got your four hours a week or whatever it is to work with the guys. Um, but there's certain points in the calendar where there's some idea of what you might be doing. Uh, yeah. So let's let's talk about September. It's not the official preseason practice yet right. uh, for you guys, but what are you able to do with them here in this month to get them prepared for, for preseason? Well, yeah, as you mentioned, we get four hours with those guys per week on the court, eight hours in total. Um, and uh, right now, you know, guys, fans may – already know if they've been following our our uh, social media that we recently got done with the mile run when the guys got back to school and you know the main thing is getting these guys back on campus and getting them reacclimated and I think for those guys it's been awesome to actually have a campus to move around and on right and actually have people <laughs> to interact with and be able to go to class and I think that they're really enjoying that but basketball wise um you know we get them in the gym for the most part we've been going with two full team practices per week, um, spending some time on a third day, really coaching our defense more since we spent a lot of the summer installing our, our offensive scheme. So trying to get caught up on the defensive end. And then those guys are lifting weights three times a week in addition to getting a couple of days of conditioning in with, with, with uh, Coach Kettler at 6.30 in the morning, no less. So I'm sure they <laughs> they uh, they love every bit of that. But guys have been working hard and, and uh, you know, really bonding and coming together. And obviously the summer was a great starting point for us. And we we're just trying to continue on that. Um, I want to come back to the defensive stuff because I, I'm going to ask you about the offense too. And I, I'm really interested in how you marry both of those things, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, for you guys, for the coaching staff, this is also a busy month for getting out on the trail a, a little bit and seeing other players too, isn't it? It is. It is actually our first day of being able to get back on the road today. Uh, just so happened to be in Indianapolis, uh, bouncing around, trying to pop in on some kids and, uh, so, yeah, you know, we're having to balance both recruiting right now and uh, as well as spending as much quality time on and off the court with our guys. So busy time of the year, but, you know, the best time of the year, I love the fall. You know, you got football going on, you got basketball, your kids on campus, like, you know, life is good. So a lot to do, but, uh, you know, we really feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're taking care of business and doing the things that we need to be doing. Yeah, Louisville Live is coming up too. Uh, this is a, that's a big weekend. Uh, what were your thoughts on uh, having it at Churchill Downs? I think everyone has always kind of wondered if it would end, end up there at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but what did you think about that? And, and what kind of plans do you guys have for, for that event? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too much. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. We want our, our, our fans and, and our recruits to be really excited and, and really not know what to expect. But, you know, obviously anytime you get a chance to get inside of Churchill down such a historic venue and put a basketball court down in there, you know, good things are going to happen, you know, so really excited about uh, our staff and our support staff and all the work that they're putting in to, to bring this event to the fans. And uh, I think, I think it's going to be awesome, you know, um, expecting a, a big crowd, a lot of surprise guests. And, uh, you know, for a lot of people, are, are, I'm thinking of our recruits and their families, they've never been to Churchill Downs. So it'll be a, a really, you know, big time experience for them to be able to get inside of there and, and also get that, that basketball element of how big Louisville basketball is. 
um, it is it, it really going to be interesting to watch or to see how it's set up because I've been to the Derby. I know you have, um, you know, where all the common space is, but you, you kind of, when you first see the announcement, you're like, where are they going to put this court? Yeah. But people get creative. So I'm sure it'll be pretty fun. <laughs> they do. I'm going to rely on our creative staff to, to put that together. I'm sure you know, we'll all we'll all be excited and overwhelmed about the job that they do, but we got the right people working on it, and they've been working on this for for a while. Obviously, it was, it's been awesome down at Fourth Street Live in recent years, but wanted to change it up and put it at Churchill, and, and I'm sure it'll go over extremely well. Now, I'm going to ask you about some of these uh, some of your guys and the offense before we do that. Uh, I know you cannot talk about uh, the Chris Mack, Dino Gaudio situation. I wouldn't ask you about that anyway. It had nothing to do with you. Um, but uh, what's what's the uh, – do you guys have an idea yet of what November looks like with the assistance? I don't know how much you can go into that, um, but I got to ask you about it, how you prepare for that segment of the season. Yeah, well, you know, obviously leading up to uh, November the 9th, Coach Mack is – He's Coach Mack, you know, he's the head coach, he's running practices, he's doing everything that he normally would in any given year. Uh, and unfortunately, when he has to step aside, it'll be an all hands on deck approach, you know. Uh, I believe I'll be standing up and, and you know, acting in his stead as, as head coach, but we'll be relying heavily, you know, on our assistant coaches and the rest of our staff to make sure that we're well prepared and ready to get the, the season off to a great start, a 6-0 start. You know, that's our, our goal to, to one game at a time, get off to a great start and hand this thing back over to Coach Mack when he returns. Well, I got to tell you, Mike, I, I woke up this morning. or well, actually, as I was getting ready for bed last night, I realized it's exactly two months uh, away from the start of the season as we're talking here. So it is – I cannot believe that it's already gotten to this point, but here we are and – yeah. Uh, it's real close. Um, let, let's talk about some of your some of your bigs, the guys that you work closely with and have worked closely with for a few seasons now uh, since you got uh, here on campus. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with Malik. Uh, it looks like he's back in uh, live workouts again, which I know is an exciting uh, turn of events for you guys. But where is he in, in, in his health and, and his readiness for the season? Yeah, he's, it's, first of all, it's great seeing five back out on the court. You know, great having his voice on the court and not on the sidelines and his presence being felt, his leadership and everything that he brings on both ends of the floor. It's been awesome just having him out there running up and down. He, he's looked great. He's done a, a really good job, obviously, uh, getting himself healthy enough to be able to, to compete. Uh, you know, conditioning is obviously something that's still – uh, a big deal for him and the rest of our guys, you know, to be honest, but especially him not having been out there in so long, uh, just getting used, getting back, you know, used to and reacclimated to um, the bumping and the grinding and, and then having to sprint and jump a ball screen and play post defense and block out and run the floor. And, you know, it's, it's a totally different type of conditioning uh, from just being on a treadmill, you know, mm -hmm. so He's getting adjusted, readjusted to that, but he's doing a great job. He's healthy. He's uh, he's full go, you know, which he hasn't been in such a long time. So it's just great to see him back out on the floor and impacting our team uh, really the only way that, that he can, you know, with the leadership and the experience that he brings. Yeah, and and you could see just from the, from the like two and a half games that he was back, and I know the North Carolina game was kind of a wash, but the Notre Dame game and a, a long portion of that Duke game the difference of having him on the floor um, was so noticeable. And, and a guy who I think it, it helped the most was Jalen Withers. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I know he's transitioning back to his more natural position as kind of a face up for uh, take me through his off season and, and how his conditioning maybe has changed and what his approach to the off season has been. Yeah. Uh, Jalen, Jalen's had a, a phenomenal off season. He, he's really bought in to, to you know, getting better, you know, just flat out being in the gym, you know, when we have workouts and we have things going on, obviously he's pushing himself to become better. But, you know, as, as anybody would tell you that's ever played this game or been successful, it's what you do when nobody else is watching. It's, it's what you do in your own time. You know, it's the, the ownership that you take over your own improvement. And he's really matured uh, in that capacity. You know, he's always in the gym, always getting shots up. His days are scripted. He has a routine about getting a certain amount of attempts, a certain amount of makes, improving his ball handling. Um, 
on the defensive side of the ball, we got to continue to get better because that's <laughs> not often something that a kid will work on, you know, in the gym by himself. So, uh, but uh, in terms of his overall development, man, his mentality, his approach, he's really grown a lot and we're expecting big things out of him. And he will be, you know, more on the perimeter this year, but, you know, with his size and his athleticism and, and, and the way that he's really taken on the teaching that we're providing him, he understands how he can still get in the lane and, and, and play around the rim. And we're going to absolutely need that from him as well. I, I know that it's, it's you know, the, what you see on the recruiting trail from a prospect to where they are. I mean, he's now entering year three or in year three now in, in the program. You would expect there to be evolution and obviously some changes over the scope of their career. But I just remember watching him like get a rebound, turn around and bring the ball up the floor as a high school kid and, and attack off the dribble from the outside. He could still post up and all that. But mm -hmm. I don't know that people realize that he has that playmaking ability to him as that they could have seen uh, at the college level because he had to play a different position last year. Yeah, no, very true. Very true. And, and he, he definitely sacrificed a lot for the team last year and playing out of position and wrestling with the Mark Williamses of the world and, you know, traditional centers, uh, Armando Baycott and all those guys. And <laughs> he, he, he did a good job. I, I, I come back to that, man. He really fought, you know, it was unconventional for him to, to have to play the five the entire year. And like I said, you know, to get tangled up with all of those guys in the pain as much as he did, but I thought he did a great job. And I really think that it helped set the table for him to hopefully have a really good year this year because he knows what it's like being in the trenches. Um, uh, you know, coming back to his skill set, he, he was absolutely a kid in high school in the AAU when I watched him play that, you know, could handle the ball on the perimeter, that can start the break. Jalen's a really good passer as well. And I, I'm hoping that that'll be highlighted this year with his ability to, you know, or with the opportunity, I should say, that he has, uh, will have now with the ball in his hands more. Um, now with being a good passer comes, you know, the responsibility of taking care of the ball and not doing too much. And uh, that's a balance that he's going to find a line that he's going to have to walk throughout the year. But we want him to be aggressive. He, he can be very creative off the bounce. He can make shots on the perimeter. Uh, but he's also our best athlete, and we want him slashing and playing above the rim as much as he can, too. Um, I'll ask you about the other uh, couple of guys you've got in the front court. Where is uh, Roosevelt? I know he was coming off an injury when he got to you guys, but it sounded like he was – at least off to a pretty good physical start when he came uh, mm -hmm. to Louisville. Where is he now? Is he able to, or are you expecting him back in live workouts or is he there yet? Yeah, Rose has actually been in live workouts for some time now, uh, going okay. back to the summer. And, you know, it's been a process with him as it is with every freshman. Uh, but with him, because of his Achilles injury, you know, he's really trying to find his way. You know, I told my Achilles, I was, you know, way, way over the hill by then, but I was still playing a little <laughs> basketball. And I, I just remember how, you know, how funny and uncomfortable of a feeling it was to get back out there after you tear it. Like you, you're constantly thinking about it and you're not wanting to make some of the movements that you normally would make had you not torn your Achilles. So, you know, that's, I think that's the biggest adjustment for him is trying to get over that mental hurdle of understanding and like really buying into the fact that, hey, you're healthy, you're good. You know what I mean? Like that thing is structurally healed. It may not feel the same just yet, you know, as you did before you toured. And I think that's still something that he's continuing to work on in the training room in terms of strengthening that calf and, uh, you know, doing all types of different exercises with our new trainer, Devontae Frazier, who's done an excellent job since he's been here. But uh, in terms of being on the court and competing, he's been able to do that. And now, and you know, he's having to balance the Achilles thing with trying to learn college basketball, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really figure this thing out and, and, the intensity and, and the effort that you have to play with every possession, you know, and understanding and uh, learning a whole new system offensively, defensively, uh, a lot of things that didn't really matter much because he can make up for it with his size and talent in high school matter now, you know, and have to be addressed uh, every day, every possession. And I think he's starting to really understand that more every day. And we actually had a, a team practice yesterday and, you know, we had one today is got my days mixed up here, Jeff, but today is Thursday. So we had one Tuesday and Wednesday. And so you could see the growth literally from Tuesday to Wednesday, you know, not great Tuesday mm -hmm. talked about some things that he needed to do better. 
And he did a pretty good job addressing those things the following day. And so that's like the maturation process for freshmen. That's like every day, can we just get 1% better? Can we just get a little better? Can we address the teaching points and the things that you didn't necessarily do well the day before? Can we correct those the next day and then bring that to the following practice? Mm -hmm. You know, that type of thing. So he's he's doing well, though. He's, he's learning and growing and I think getting a lot better every day because of all the coaching that, that he's being provided. Mm -hmm. I not say, only from the coaches by the way Malik oh, Williams yeah. you know his teammates are really coaching him and encouraging him because they see the potential of him and so you know it's nothing like a player laden team which I think player led team I think we have that you know mm -hmm. and so to hear that that positive peer pressure uh from his teammates I think is really helping them just as much as the coaching yeah I was going to say, I, I wish that my my golf game would improve like that from one day to the next. That's, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, it does not. Um, uh, but that's great to hear and, and, and good to hear that he's that he's healthy. And I, I know it's just such a limiting experience if you're a freshman and you're not able to do everything right away. So th that's great to hear for him. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll just ask you about the other three guys real quick. Uh, JJ Trainer, Gabe Wisnitzer, Sidney Curry. Uh, what have you seen from from those other three guys? Yeah, all, all three of those guys have, have, you know, had good summers. Obviously, we got sit a little late. But JJ and Gabe, you know, phenomenal job this summer in terms of getting better and and not only on the court but off the court in the weight room and conditioning. And JJ's been dinged up a little bit here lately uh, with the hamstring, but he's fine. He'll be back probably next week. We hope. Uh, you know, but he he had a phenomenal summer. You know, JJ brings a dimension to our team that. You know, we really didn't have as much last year. You know, he can play above the rim. He's a lob threat, but he's also incredibly skilled with a perimeter skill set. Um, Got to get him, continue to get him stronger and tougher. You know, he doesn't have to, he'll never probably be the strongest guy on the court anymore. You know, I don't know if he was in high school, but that, that can't affect his toughness and his nastiness that he plays with. And so just trying to consistently uh, get him to appreciate that and, and compliment his skill set was with some with some toughness. And uh I think he he understands that and he's improved in that area. Gabe has gotten so much better. Um it's it's amazing how how much he understands what we're doing. And I think that'll give him a chance to really impact our team on both ends of the floor. He's given himself um, you know, the opportunity to get out on the floor because he's changed his body, he's slimmed down even more, he's leaner, he can run, he can change directions a lot better. I think the game last year for Gabe was moving a million miles per hour, and I think it slowed down for him tremendously, and, and that's the type of growth that you want to see um, in, your, in your young guys. And then Sidney Carey is, is learning. You know, he's, he's having to be uh, taught a lot of things that I don't know he were necessarily that important in junior college. I think they did things a little simpler for him in junior college, and we're challenging him to learn more and to do more with us. And so it's a process for him, but, you know, his main thing is, for us has been just trying to like get in game shape, you know, um, picked up a little weight while he was out in between his decision, uh, you know, and then now that he's here, Coach Kettler, our, you know, has done a phenomenal job in terms of trimming him down. Our, our new nutritionist, Tiffany, has been great with him and, and he's really bought in. He's a phenomenal kid. He's one of the best kids uh, in terms of coachability and, and just, you know, being a, a really good attentive listener who, who wants to get better and absorb everything that you have to say. He's one of the best kids that I've had in that area. So really excited about him and hopeful that, that, that things will continue to improve for him as we go. Yeah, it's a crowded room, man. It's, you got a lot. You got a big front court this year, and I know yeah. that's a much welcome change from some of the previous years where you had like three guys working yeah. out with you on yeah. one end. I was getting, floor. I was getting a little lonely down there for a while. So now we yeah. got a crew, so that's 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 a plus. That's a great thing to have. That's yeah. the strength of our team, my depth. Absolutely. Well, last thing I'll ask you then, Mike. You've been very gracious with your time uh, this morning. Uh, I, I, everyone is so curious. Uh, about the Kiwi man, Ross McMains and, and uh, his impact on the offense. Uh, and I'm curious, you've been with, with Chris Mack for years and years on his staff. Uh, we know what the defense is going to look like. The offense is kind of what everyone is, is really curious about. One, how are you going to marry those two styles of play uh, on one end of the floor and the other, but two, just how do you think that implementation went this summer for everybody to try to get used to a little bit of a different system. 
Yeah, well, you know, in general, I, I think that Ross is is incredible at what he does. I really do. I think that being a becoming an NBA coach is is something that's very realistic for Ross at some point. Hopefully, no time soon. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, I think that's in the cards for Ross just because he has a, a really unique uh, feel. You know, and and uh, it's it's almost ingenious in terms of how he's gone about implementing. Um, our offense from the ground up, you know, from everything from player development, you know, with our guards, our wings and our bigs to our overall scheme, uh, challenging our guys' ability to play fast. But as my high school coach would say, not in a hurry. Uh, we <laughs> yeah. want to be fast. We want to be downhill, but we absolutely want to be under control and understand spacing and, uh, you know, know when to wave, wave the white flag and move on to the next action. But really try to put a lot of pressure on the defense in the first few seconds of the shot clock um, empowers our guys to, you know, to, to, you know, take advantage of the opportunities that you spend all this time in the gym working on, you know, if you're wide open, shoot the ball, shoot the ball, shoot it with confidence, you know, and just understanding what a good shot is, what an okay shot is, what a bad shot is and how we can go about, you know, getting a great shot every time, you know, if we really help each other get a great shot. And uh, so it's a lot of different things that I could talk about, but I, I just think that Ross does a, a really good job of making the game, um, you know, he's obviously not reinventing the game, but he's making the game simple and simpler for our guys as we've started to learn more about the system and how we want to play and it starts in transition and playing fast and really trying to put a lot of pressure on the defense. Like I said, uh, it's, it's, you know, in the first, first few seconds of the shot clock. Yeah, the, for, for true hoop heads out there, there's a lot of content uh, from Ross's time with the New Zealand national team with uh, mm -hmm. pro basketball overseas of him talking about some of the things that uh, he considers his principle. So it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Chris Oliver's mm -hmm. basketball podcast is great to listen to, but it's fascinating to think about him coming into a group that knows basketball obviously very well. And I know Mac has led all these clinics and, and talked a lot about the pack line and what he teaches rebounding to see it kind of become a mind meld. I think everyone's pretty interested to see where it goes uh, and how it goes. Uh, but Mike, thank you so much for your time, my man. I know that uh, you're a busy guy as the lights go out behind me here in my house for a moment. I don't know what that was all about, uh, but thank you so much for your time and uh, we will catch up with you soon.